There is a new AI in town and it's absolutely incredible. It can teach you how to use any software that you have on your computer. Set up your own personalized AI tutor and it's absolutely free to use. Though I'm not sure what I feel about this one, does this mean that tutorials like this one are soon coming to an end? I don't know, but let me show you how it works and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think AI is going to replace human tutors or is there something about that human connection that makes you rather prefer a human teaching you how to use applications? Let's dive into it. So the tool I'm talking about is the new Gemini model by Google. It now has the ability for you to interact with it in real time. If you don't know what Gemini is, it's Google's large language model, sort of like ChatGPT, but made by Google. So let me show you how to access it. You want to head over to aistudio.google.com. This is Google's developer portal where developers get to try Google's model. But don't worry, you don't have to write any code. It's quite easy for you to try this new AI feature. So once you're here on Google's AI Studio, you want to click right here where it says real time, stream real time. And right here, you have three options. You can talk to Gemini, so you can use your mic and just chat with it. Just sort of like chat GPT's live voice mode. And you can also show Gemini your webcam. So you can turn on your webcam and ask it questions about what it can see around you. So you could pretty much ask it to teach you anything, not just software. But what we're going to be looking at today is this option here to share your screen. So you can share your screen with the AI model and ask it any kind of questions about anything that it can see on your screen. Let's show you some examples. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, it's asking me to allow the site to have access. I'm going to say while using the site and I'll go ahead and share my entire screen so I can show you a couple of demos. So as you can see, I have character animator opened right here on the welcome window. Can you teach me how to create a very basic animation using character animator? Sure, I can help you with that. To start, would you like to use one of the example puppets or would you prefer to create a new puppet? Uh, let's use one of the example puppets. Okay, let's use an example puppet. Which example puppet would you like to use for this animation? I like the uh, foodie. This that looks like a soccer head. Okay, to get started with foodie, you'll need to click on his thumbnail image to open it into a new project. Okay, to animate the puppet with your voice and face, you'll need to make sure the microphone and camera input are enabled. In the camera and microphone panel on the right side, click the microphone icon to turn on microphone input and click the camera icon to turn on camera input. After they're both enabled, your puppet should move and talk along with you. Do you want to try that now? Okay, to record your motion and voice capture, you'll need to start the recording process by pressing the red circle button at the bottom of the application. Then you can use triggers to activate actions. You can find those in the triggers panel on the left of the screen. To trigger an action, press the corresponding key on your keyboard while recording. Hello everybody and welcome to today's soccer match. I'm going to be your host and your one and only host, Foodie. All right, next let's try this out with PowerPoint. Hi there, what can I help you with today? So I have this PowerPoint open and I have this uh, PNG image of a doctor and a nurse. I would like to animate them in as well as animate this bee to fly across. Could you guide me through the process of what to do? Sure, I can help with that. To animate the doctor, nurse, and bee, first select the image you want to animate. Then, navigate to the Animations tab and select the animation you desire from the options available. Do you know which specific animations you'd like to use? So I want the doctor to sort of uh, fly in like an uh, explainer video. Okay, for the doctor to fly in, you can use a fly-in animation from the animation options. After selecting the doctor, go to the Animations tab and click on the Fly In option in the Entrance Animation section. So for the uh, for the bee, I want the bee to sort of slowly fly across the screen. How do I do that? To have the bee fly across the screen, you can use the Line Motion Path animation. First, select the bee image, then go to the Animations tab and click on the Add Animation button. Sorry, sorry, you're taking. Scroll down. Sorry, you're doing it too quickly. Can you be slower so I can follow along? My apologies, I can definitely slow down. First, select the B image and then click on the Animations tab at the top of the PowerPoint window. Are you able to follow along so far? I'm there right now, so what do I do next? Okay, now click on the Add Animation button, which is right under the Animations tab. This will display a menu of various animation options you can apply to the B. Have you found that button? Yes, I have this open now, as you can see on my screen. Great, now move your mouse down to the Motion Path section near the bottom of that menu. From there, select the Lines animation, 
which will allow you to create a path for the bee to fly across the screen. Do you see that option? Yes. To test the animation, you can click the play button in the animation pane on the right hand side of the screen. How do I subscribe to this cool YouTube channel? There is a red subscribe button below the video and to the right of the channel name. You should click that button to subscribe to the channel. If you're getting any value from this video at all or enjoying it, kindly give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel to get more tutorials like this. It goes a long way in helping the channel. Let's try a few more examples. I have an Excel sheet opened here with um, weekly tasks and those responsible to keep chores for my family. I want to add another column to put in reward points for whenever anybody's done with their tasks. Could you walk me through that? To do this, you would first select column T, which is the one after the last column in your spreadsheet, and then right click. You could then type in the heading reward points to indicate what it will be used for. Can I have a drop down to select the rewards? instead of typing it in? Yes, you can create a drop-down menu in the reward points column. First, you will select the cells where you want the drop-down menu. Then, you would go to the data tab in the Excel ribbon. Sorry, you're going too fast. I'm right now on the data validation window that popped up. What do I do now? Okay, you are on the data validation window, which is correct. Now, in the allow drop-down menu, you should select list. Then, a source field will appear below, which is where you will type the different values you want in your dropdown, separated by commas. For example, you could type 1, 2, 3, 5, 10. Would you like to do that now? Done. What do I do next? Now that you've entered your list values, you can press the OK button on the data validation window. This will apply the dropdown list to the cells that you selected, and you should now be able to select a value from the dropdown. Would you like to try that now? Sure. Great. I have Blender opened here and I've never used this software before. Can you teach me how to do a simple animation to have a ball move from left to right? Sure, I can help with that. First, let's make sure you have a ball in your scene. Do you see the cube in the center of your screen? Yes. Great, let's transform the cube into a ball. In the top left menu, click Add, then select Mesh, then UV Sphere. This will create a sphere. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay, now we're going to animate the sphere. First. Make sure the sphere is selected. Sorry, no, then how do I move my camera around to look around the sphere? You can move the camera by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging the mouse. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling with the middle mouse wheel. Does this help you navigate? Yes, so now how do I animate this? Okay, animate the sphere. First, make sure it is selected. Then, look at the timeline at the bottom of the screen. Do you see the number one? Yes. Good. Now press the I key and then select location from the menu that appears. This sets a keyframe for the sphere's position at frame one. Did you get that? All right, now move the timeline cursor to frame 100. You can do this by clicking the timeline or by dragging the cursor to frame 100. Once that is done, move the sphere to the right side of the screen by dragging it with the mouse. Once you are happy with the sphere's new position, press A again and select location once more. Great. You have successfully animated the sphere from left to right. Now press the spacebar to watch the animation in real time. And there you have it. That was quite impressive, I must say. Let me know what you thought of that in the comments. Do you think this is going to replace Tutas to teach you maths, um, softwares, or anything like that? Or you still prefer humans uh, to give you that human touch when you want to learn new things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more tutorials like this. If you want to see a tutorial from me on how to create animations, that tutorial is going to be popping up right here. I'll catch you in the next one. Keep learning. Bye-bye.